What's going on, y'all? It's up for debate, and we got the Red River rivalry today to break down. Wow. Woo! What a crazy game this was where OU does win the game 34-30, to 30, um, where they were ranked 12th, and Texas was ranked third in the nation. So much to unpack with this. I appreciate you for tuning in, first of all. Like and comment and subscribe to Up For Debate. We have a lot of content on the way. Um, giving you a mix of sports today. So that's what we're debating today. And like I said, so much to impact. So let me shut up and let's get right into it. So, look guys, I am a Texas fan. And I want to make sure I make that known because some of my opinions will be a little bit passionate about the Longhorns. But I want to stay also um, objective because of what the Sooners did today. Um, I think it definitely is worthwhile of talking about them as college football playoff contention. I mean, they're an undefeated team still sitting at 6-0. and oh. And first of all, giving my kudos to has to go to Dylan Gabriel. I mean, I think a lot of people, including myself, didn't really know how to gauge Gabriel. I mean, you know, we've heard all week of Quinn versus Gabriel. Um, and what would that matchup be? Definitely Gabriel has played a lot more football at the college level than Quinn Ewers. So um, that could have been a factor. But also, I feel like Quinn has played in more big games being at a uh, Power 5 school like Texas. Uh, whether Gabriel's, you know, uh, was at UCF before and then made his way over to um, to OU. But nonetheless, man, Gabriel's a baller. Let's just keep it real. Dylan Gabriel is an absolute baller. I'm a left-handed person myself. Gabriel's left hand has a pretty spiral. Man, he's spinning that thing. So I got to give credit to Dylan Gabriel today. And what made it so, so tough today for Texas defense was the ability of Gabriel to take off and run. And I think we're going to highlight that a little more. But Texas oh, D-line and Texas in the trenches, that's what everyone's saying. That's the difference with Texas this year. They have, they're good in the trenches. They're good where it matters. Moving to the SEC, it's SEC type trenches they have. I'm telling you, it did not look like that today. OU pushed that D line. They 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 pretty much bullied them, made them really where they wanted to go. I mean, and when Dylan Gabriel had running lanes, he's got speed. He's known to be a dual threat quarterback, and I don't think Texas really thought that that would be an Achilles heel for them today. And I feel like that was a big part of it because other than that, I mean, you don't get a lot of running production from the rest of their team. If it wasn't, if it wasn't Dylan Gabriel, I mean, we can go to the box score. Uh, Gabriel had 113 yards on the ground with 14 carries. Um, and, and usually with quarterback, some of those carries could be sacks. And I don't even think Texas got a lot of sacks in that game. And that, that also is what um, had Gabriel able to get over 100 yards rushing. And I think if you go into this game and you say, hey, Dylan Gabriel's going to rush for over 100 yards, I don't think a lot of Texas fans would say, oh, well, Texas will still win that one um, because that's just such a, a lethal um, way of winning a football game when your quarterback can run the football. Now, Texas defense, the, 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 the weakness of that defense – had been the secondary, but I just want to be, as a Texas fan, that defense looked terrible today. And I know they were, Catalan uh, got hurt. He's a physical, strong safety, um, hard hitter, but it's a coverage thing. You know, Jal Jalil Farouk had 130 yards for five catches, man. That's that's crazy. Um, you know, Drake Stoops helped out as well. Andrew Anthony had a few catches. So Dylan Gabriel, going back to that OU offense, He's dangerous, man, and I think a lot of people counted out Gabriel. I think even OU fans, because when you're an OU quarterback, um, just being a Texas fan, you still know that um, that comes with a lot of scrutiny. You can be praised. You can be a legend because um, I live in Oklahoma, even though I am a Texas fan. Yeah, call me crazy. I live in Oklahoma, uh, born uh, not born in Oklahoma, but raised in Oklahoma, so I know how OU fans are. And when you have a great quarterback at that university, it, it creates a whole buzz around the state. Let's keep it a buck. Um, but I feel like I don't think Gabriel had got that stamp of approval because he hadn't proven himself 
and the the biggest game is being an, an OU quarterback. That's going against Texas in the Red River rivalry every year. He proved that and actually won in the game uh, at the very end, man. We'll talk about that a little bit too. Nick Anderson, he, he was the one that caught that pass in the back of the left end zone to give OU the 34-30 lead um, to go ahead and win that football game. But that was uh, that was another great game. I think you got to put this game up there as one of the top games to anticipate every year, regardless of what each team's record is going into that game. Now, this time we got a good top 25 matchup, and that's where you kind of expect this to be, really, um, in, at, at its best power. This is a top five matchup, and shoot, both teams were undefeated. So, I mean, still a great game. But um, now I want to go into what Texas didn't do and how they lost this game. I think, man, in the beginning, Quinn Ewers, careless interception. Very careless interception. And I don't understand what's going through his mind. Um, you see, you know, it was supposed to be intended for A.D. Mitchell, uh, Adonai Mitchell, excuse me. And Quinn knows it's not open, but it's like he's like, I got to. I got to throw it there. And it's like, why? Why? So early in the game, it, it was a gift to the Sooners. And they took advantage of it. The second interception, I understand he's trying to squeeze that ball in there towards the goal line to a, a big target in JT Sanders. But also, it's like, it's not a great throw, Quinn. And I thought Quinn had a great game. I mean, I'm going to say great game. I'm sorry. I thought he stepped it up. He got himself together. But that start is going to lose you football games, man. And I, and that's, I think that's what happened. Um, that first quarter was crazy. Yes, Texas did get a block punt in, their own, in the end zone to score. And, man, that had me happy because I'm like, oh, you, oh, you goes up 14-0. We don't want to be on the other side of what they felt like when a couple of years ago it was 28-7. Yeah, oh, you came back to win that one. But it's like I don't want to have to just climb back. And I don't, and really, that's something we haven't seen from the Longhorns this year yet. What can they do when they are down, when their backs are against the wall? And I think we saw a tad bit of that, them having um, being down by ten points in the third quarter. But you can't have that type of start when when you're the one that's receiving Quinn second play of the game, and you're throwing a pick, and it's a lackluster throw. It's like you didn't really care. You know, and I know he's pretty chill, nonchalant guy. Yes, he shows some emotion. We're all human, you know, but I felt like that play is something that Quinn's got to fix. He's a little bit nonchalant with his interceptions, and it's like, man, you don't, we don't need that. It wasn't necessary throw. Could have just, you know, maybe even took the sack, threw it away, whatever the case may be. But that got Texas off to a rough start and really trying, trying to climb their way back. Now, did they prevail? They sure as hell did, man. One person I say is a straight dog for Texas, Jonathan Brooks, man. We know the backstory of his dad passing away, and then we just want to say RIP to his father and um, just send blessings to his family. That guy plays with so much heart, man. He is the beat of Texas right now, or one of the beats. He is an aggressive runner. He's elusive. He's quick. I don't think I don't think OU had an answer for him. I really don't. And so at the end of that game, the end of that drive, when when the score is tied, 27-27, let's talk about the last set of downs. I think um, um, the last set of downs, you see a play action. RPO, whatever you want to call it. The running lane is there, but Quinn keeps it and gets sacked. While the time, while the time is running down, OU has no timeouts. And that is what frustrates me because to me, if this was Alabama, the way Sark called that game, if Texas scored again when they had when they were up with seven minutes to go in the Alabama game, I don't think Sark cared if he ever if he scored. He wanted to make sure triple zero that the Longhorns won that game. I did not see that type of clock management from Sark and the Longhorns in Red River Robbery. You're, I get it. Run on first down. I don't think they really could stop Jonathan Brooks. 
and you're doing a play action on first down and get sacked when the O-line was getting whipped all day. I don't know how many sacks um, that OU defense had. Let's see if we can figure that out. But, I mean, man, um, five sacks on the day for that OU defense. O-line did not play. They did not come to play. The trenches did not come to play. The defense, we talked about that. They couldn't get off their blocks. Dylan Gabriel had plenty running lanes. The O-line could not hold for Quinn Ewers, man. And these past couple weeks, we've, yeah, we've been praising that Quinn can be a dual threat. But Quinn's have, having to take off and run. He's having to make his leg, use his legs, excuse me. But I think they couldn't hold, they couldn't hold that OUD line. And I think the 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 epitome of how far that OU defense has come uh, should definitely be um, be commended. You know, Brent Venables did an excellent job of game planning. I think even Jeff Levy, to an extent, um, kind of figured out PK, Pete Kwiatkowski. Um, he figured them out on defense. I think that defense really looked tired. They did not fly around like they usually do. I couldn't even recognize that defense. Um, you know, there were some plays in there. I think they contained the actual running backs running game. But if you're not containing Dylan Gabriel, a dual threat, a dual threat quarterback, and he rushes for 113 yards, did, you didn't have a good game running the, uh, stopping the run. And I, I think that's just flat out period. So what? The, let's talk about the future, the outlook. We both know OU and Texas are moving on to the SEC after this year is over. And OU, look, I mean, they're still 6-0. The Big 12 is not a good conference, as we all know, kind of why the reason why they're moving on. OU can run the table, man, and I think it's Texas fans that kind of hurts us. We're going to have to see them again in the Big 12 championship. We have any chance, but this is where my scenario and optimism as a Texas fan, you're wondering what does that really look like? Because as we saw last year, TCU lost in the Big 12 championship game, but still went to the CFP. Um, now, is it the reason that happened? Because although, yes, K-State won that game, they're not going to be, they weren't going to go to the CFP regardless of them winning that Big 12 championship game. Maybe Texas could if they're able to uh, win out as well. And then Texas that one loss, OU is undefeated. Um, and then if Texas were to win that one, do you put Texas in the CFP? Do you eliminate the Big 12 altogether, both having one loss? If OU loses that one, if OU wins that game, I mean, obviously they're going to go. They'll be undefeated. Um, but I think as a Texas fan, I'm looking at the scenarios for us because TCU still went to the CFP with losing that game. And, and, and this is another thing. A lot, you OU fans don't want to admit it, but a lot of you picked Texas to win this game. And that is exactly where Texas fans and Sark was warning this OU fan base, this OU football team, terrified of the Longhorns because of how good they've been playing this year. They beat Alabama um, convincingly. And so I think that kind of put fear, oh, they beat Alabama. Texas is SEC ready. Is the question everyone's thinking is OU SEC ready? And I think a win today would have still left that question mark in OU fans' minds. Are they ready for the SEC? Now you beat Texas, who beat Alabama. Yeah, that question can be answered. They're ready. They're ready. You don't have to question that anymore. I mean, it's still gonna be a question mark, I think, for both teams, but in in hindsight. I don't think they're thinking about that. They're thinking about CFP and who can we beat? We're good. Not thinking about they lost 49-0 last year. No Dylan Gabriel. So, I mean, we can just kind of let's rule it out. Let's 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 rule that out. But I still feel like if Venerables would not have had a win over Texas going to the SEC, that puts a lot of pressure on that program because they're trying to find continuity and build up the legacy of OU and I think if you're not beating Texas, then that's a problem for either uh, for, for OU. And that's the same thing for Texas. If you're not beating OU, then 
it's a problem. And so I think if you have a head coach that couldn't have got that done, then moving to the SEC, that could be a red flag. But now that that's in a whole nother universe because that didn't actually happen. OU beat Texas. And now OU fans, OU faithful, their team can have that have that question mark answered of we're ready for the Big 12. We beat Texas again going into the SEC. We're going to be all right. And I think that question could have been still out there. Now, I mean, I know it's midway through the season and a lot can play out, but I just wanted to break that down for y'all. This is up for debate. Let me know how you feel in the comments. Uh, like this video, share it out. Let's make sure we build this um, this network. And I will see you all in the next one. It's up for debate with Jay Rich. Y'all have a good one.